So in the last 24 hours, we saw two significant drone attacks in the Black Sea. These are really important. They're waterborne drone attacks. And while RT was claiming, I was reading the RT articles claiming they shot down everything that came at it. Um, no, they didn't. Uh, there were pretty significant damages here. So we're going to we're going to look at this and try to process this. Now, this is this is interesting for a whole different reason. About a year ago, it was August 20th, I did this video, day 177 of the war, Crimea and the naval war. I'm going to link it below so you can see the whole, but I want you to hear this. Listen to this. Navy, a Russian Navy crews are under orders to avoid the Ukrainian coast. Like that's a really strange starting place, right? But that was a year ago. One year ago, the Russian Navy was trying to stay away from the coast so that they couldn't be tagged and sunk. Watch this. I'm going to unpack this. And this guy, uh, the, the, the author of this, David Axe, you are the man writing this article and laying it out like, like you did. Okay. In keeping 20 miles or so from Crimea, the ships can stay under the protective umbrella of ground-based air defenses. Wait a minute. You're the Russian fleet. You outnumber um, almost completely the Ukrainians. The, the Ukrainians had one ship when this started, and they scuttled it. The tide began to turn on March 23rd when a, a Ukrainian Tachka ballistic missile struck the Black Sea Fleet uh, landing ship Sar Sartov. The explosion sank Sartov, damaging at least one other landing ship. So they killed one of their own ships, their only ship, and then they sunk one of the navy, uh, one of the Russian navy's ship, and damaged another. On April thirteenth, the Ukrainian navy anti-ship battery put two Neptune missiles into the side of the Russian cruiser Moskva, one to two. <laughs> I mean, and they have no navy, so they with zero ships, it's one to two. Harpoon uh, hit and sank the uh, support ship Velaskov Barbarov while she made a supply run on Snake Island on May 12th. So it's one to three, and Ukraine has sunk all four of these ships. Now, the hits keep coming. Roll the clock forward a year till yesterday, and what we see is that the Astra was struck. Now, how was the Astra struck? And this is a film of it listing in the uh, in the Black Sea. And here is uh, Dennis Davdov talking about how it was struck. And well, gives so Russia lost bit. one more ship. It happened in the Black Sea, but this time not near to Crimea. Let's go to the Russian territory of the Novorossiysk port. This place is called Temes Bay, and there was the accident. So here we go with the video. It is the drone that Ukraine used to target the Russian military ships. And this is the huge ship, as you can see. The name of it is Alenigorsky Miner. The main purpose of the ship is to transfer the Russian military vehicles, even tanks. They use the ship quite a lot to transfer the goods to Crimea after the Kerch Bridge attack. As you see, no one is firing towards the drone. Everything is standard. Even and that's though really interesting because RT was talking about how they shot everything down and there's nothing to see here. And then when I looked at video last night on RT, there was not a single video about either attack because I'm going to talk about two attacks. So I just find that fascinating. Oh, there are big lights shining in front of the drone. So it was quite a calm early morning time and the drone went into the very... Okay, so I'm not, not going to show when the drone actually hits, just to keep YouTube standards. It, it's going to just fuzz out, right? But I'm not going to show that. Okay, uh, here is a United 24 talking about the same incident. And on the night of August 4th, a Ukrainian naval drone attacked a Russian landing vessel. The ship Olengorsky Goryank was in the Norv Norvasysk bay at the moment that it was damaged the drone was loaded with 450 kilograms of tnt that's a lot that's enough to do a good deal of damage russian authorities say that the drone attack was repelled that is what they said on uh, rt and that's just fascinating however videos on social networks show that the ship has suffered a severe hole and you can see that um, on multiple social networks um, how they do it well CNN showed this last week, which I thought was like, that's odd. Why would you show that? Why wouldn't you just attack? But here's what these drones look like. This is a Ukraine's arsenal is lowered into the water. 
roars out into the open water. Under the control of this pilot, last we don't show his face, call sign Shark. This is Ukraine's latest sea or surface drone designed to attack Russia in the Black Sea. They've never been shown to the public before. This model is armed with 300 kilograms or almost 700 pounds of explosive and can hit a target 800 kilometers, 500 miles away. They're very easy to control, Shark tells us. They have severely limited the Russian Navy's movement. Ah, and that last point, they've severely limited the Russian Navy's movements. Well, now the Russian Navy is on notice in a significant way. Here is Anna from Ukraine giving some background about it. Putin is constantly escalating. For example, when he withdraws grain deal and starts bombing um, hangars, uh, starts bombing simply grain supply in Ukraine and um, threatening the world with famine when so many countries. Yeah, so let's let's on. check on that. How much grain was actually uh, uh, bombed? Uh, this is UATV talking about 180,000 tons of grain destroyed. Right, so she's not kidding. This is a significant thing. Okay, let's keep going. Ukrainian food product. So, um, since the withdrawal of uh, this grain deal, Russian ships, warships became extremely active in the Black Sea, and they warned everyone they will shoot and destroy the food because they are terrorists. Nothing else. There is no other reason because it's not just the war against Ukraine. Honestly, uh, and uh, Ukrainians are responding. This ship uh, came to the Black Sea, entered the Black Sea on the 9th of February 2022 for training. That's why let your normalcy bias does not let you relax when you read that something is happening on the border with uh, Poland, but these are just tra trainings. I was living with this idea that these are just trainings, this is just the demonstration of power and nothing else until the dawn of the 24th of February. So this ship came to the Black Sea on the 9th of February to actively participate in the invasion of uh, Ukraine in the end of February 2022. And it stayed there. After Crimean Bridge was set on fire, it was used for transportation and we all know what kind of things Russian orcs transport from and to Crimea. Most of them. Okay, so you have a, a sense of what's going on with that particular ship. Okay, so let's keep going and talk about uh, the other ship. Now, there was a second ship, and it was a tanker, a uh, uh, an oil tanker coming back from Syria. In this this found picture may or may not be legitimate. I've seen some things that were saying, no, this is an old picture, uh, and it's an open question, but that's about what the tanker the looks tanker like. The tanker ship. We have two of the news. Definitely it was hit by something, and the second one, I changed my mind about it. Actually, it was working for the Russian military. It even went under the sanctions for working for the Russian military. I asked for my followers on my Telegram channel to give me some of the proofs for that and here we go with them. So you may find this vessel SIG in the sanctions list. Yes, not all of the countries applied sanctions on the Russian commercial fleet, but I'm sure that the crew members on that ship are all Russians. I don't think that the international... So the vas vessel named SIG was doing... Uh, transporting Russian oil. And, you know, look, if you can go after Russian oil um, and, can, and, and keep these ships from uh, being active in the Black Sea, well, if you're going to target ships like this, now you've given the Russians a whole different problem set where now they have to really economize and think about not just protecting their fleet, but protecting these ships as well. And you've stretched them extra thin. So this is a significant um, change to the way that the Black Sea was just dominated by the Russians before. National crew will work on the sanctioned vessel. 
It is the bad notice in their resume. The ship is leased by the Russian company that has the office in St. Petersburg and it performs the operation for the Russian army as well. It was even one of those tankers that Russia used to supply their group in Syria. So definitely it is the legitimate target for Ukraine. Because this commercial vessel is implemented into the Russian military infrastructure. You may see the parallel here with the Kerch Bridge. Russia mainly built it for the military purpose and it's their main supply road to Crimea and southern part of Ukraine. But at the same time, it is used as commercial infrastructure for civilian okay, cars. And I'll put the link to uh, the Davdov, uh, the uh, Anna from Ukraine and my video. Uh, I'll put those links below. Okay, a little bit more. Here is what this looks like. This uh, 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 drone going after the SIG. Okay. And that's, I mean, it's just, it's very stealthy, hard to see. Uh, hard, it's so small, it's hard to spot on the radar, that kind of thing. There it is. There's the SIG. I mean, it's pretty amazing what they can do with this. And we'll cu cut it right there. Okay. Um, now, this is uh, Sukumimus talking about the same event. Interesting news. The second ship hit by marine drones in a day. So Ukraine has certainly improved these drones because in the past, the attacks carried out using them weren't successful. This is going to add further pressure on Russia's Black Sea fleet. If Russian transport ships and tankers are now being attacked, they're going to have to divert naval assets in order right. to try and defend them. So that's it for this video. I hope you found it interesting. If yep, so, that's exactly right. They're going to have to divert naval assets. Uh, and, you know, if you're trying to ensure your oil going out, it's going to be a lot more costly for you to ensure it. Here's the uh, Noel reports. Ukraine's Maritime Authority has announced a military threat to shipping in the waters of the six russian black sea ports they are and here they're listed earlier ukraine said it would consider all vessels that would go to russian ports or the occupied ukraine ports as carrying military cargo well that's tit for tat for leaving the the grain deal and then doing what they're doing and that's that seems like it's a pretty fair um thing given what russia is doing to ukraine okay so what's going to happen from here at this point, you got to look at it and say um, it's it's going to make a huge headache for Russia. It's going to have them divert their resources, and it's going to make it more costly to distribute their oil, distribute their grain, distribute whatever, because they can't get the insurance. And I think that is really what we got to keep our eyes on. Okay, that's it. Thank you for your time. Thank you for the likes, the shares, the subscribes. Thank you for being the kind of person that cares about Ukraine. I'll be back tomorrow. I hope you will be too.